Hungry, hungry, looking for something to eat. Hmm. What to cook? What to cook? Oh, hey guys. Have you been there the whole time? Oh, how rude. Okay. It's good to see you. Looking for something to eat. So, um, yeah. Let's cook something. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see from the set behind me, it is my kitchen. This is going to be a special segment of my channel. The second episode of Ian Shares a Recipe. You can probably tell already from the title what I'm gonna cook. That's right, I am going to cook nasi goreng. Now nasi goreng, literal translation of that in English is actually rice fried. But you don't say it like that in English, obviously. It's gonna be fried rice. So, fried rice it is. I'm going to make an authentic Indonesian fried rice. As authentic as I can make it with the ingredients that, is, that are available here. So, I'm so keen because I just love it. When I was a kid, I loved fried rice and now I still love fried rice. If it was available every day, I would have it, but having too much of it is probably not good for you. In Indonesia, you can find fried rice vendors on the side of the street. Sometimes it would look like this, or it can also look like this. And yeah, each of them is unique. Each of them have their own way of cooking it, different seasoning, different ingredients. But usually, it's really simple. The only protein that you would find in most street vendors of nasi goreng makers um, is chicken and egg. And then maybe baso, like meatballs. Rarely you will find vegetables in Indonesian street nasi goreng because yeah, it's just ne I've never seen it. Probably a garnish like a like a spring onion but that's about it as far as I can remember and as far as I can tell Indonesian street fried rice no vegetables so today though I am going to include a vegetable and you will see it so let's get into the ingredients eh who's keen I'm keen I'm gonna show you quickly now this recipe will be enough for four people I reckon if not more depends on how much you eat but from the amount of rice that you can see in front of you, I reckon that is enough for four. And all of the other ingredients. I am making this for dinner later anyway, so it's not just for presentation sake of sharing a recipe as much as it is. I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna enjoy it for dinner, and you probably won't, but you can make it yourself and tell me later in the comment below after you've made it whether it is good or not. The ingredients, obviously. First one, we need rice. You can tell here, there's about a mountain of rice, a plate full of rice. It's probably equivalent to about two to three cups of rice that has been cooked. Um, we ate rice last night, so now that's the leftovers. It's been in the fridge, it's cold, and it's good. And that's what you want. That is actually the secret to a good fried rice. You wanna use rice that has been that's a leftover rice, basically. Um, you don't want a fresh rice out of the rice cooker. It's just not the best. Um, for the protein, obviously, we got some eggs, right? Some eggs here. Because it's for four, I usually just use four, depending on the amount of people. If it's for four people, then four eggs. If it's just for the two of you, less rice, maybe half that. And then two eggs. Next protein is chicken. Now, the other night we had barbecue chicken. You know, there's a whole lot of leftovers, so I just, you know, um, break it down to little pieces, and the f chicken is perfect. Um, I usually like adding onion as well, okay? So I've diced up and cut up a, a bowl full of it, so that's about 140 grams of onions, and now, this next one, hmm, you won't find it in the streets of Indonesia, but I thought I like the color. That yellow color is kind of nice. 
Um, so there is a yellow capsicum, I've chopped it up, sliced it up, uh, about 100 grams in there. Capsicum is probably one of my favorite ones to add into fried rice, simply because of the fragrance that it releases, releases after you, when you're cooking it. Um, it has that spicy smell to it, almost like chili, but it's not spicy, you know what I mean? Because capsicum is not spicy. Now, for the seasoning part of it, um, besides the onion, I'm gonna use garlic, okay? Minced garlic, that's ready to go. Uh, just a bit lazy, I know. You can use fresh garlic, you know, have about three or four cloves or whatever. It, it is up to you, you can make it as garlicky as you want but I'm gonna use about two heap teaspoon of this garlic, minced garlic. Now, sambal, chili. There are many types of sambal, especially the one from this particular brand. You could, you know, um, you can have sambal terasi, you can have sambal bajak, you can have sambal baso, um, whatever it might be, chili sauce. I'm gonna add this, but not too much. And I'm sure it's not gonna be spicy if I only add a teaspoon of this to this amount of rice. Now the next one, um, obviously salt and pepper. Okay, salt and pepper is good. Soy sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, ketchup asin um, for the saltiness again, because, oh, because you're using this too, just be careful, right? Um, balance out the saltiness yourself. Don't add too much of both. And to balance it all out, Indonesian nasi goreng always uses ketchup manis. Now, ketchup manis, sweet soy sauce, okay? Just to balance it out again, it, it, it adds the darkness to it. You'll see it is later on that it is, once it's cooked, it's brown. It's a bit more of a darker brown rather than some other style of fried rice, perhaps, especially like the Chinese ones. I don't have a specific amount of how much to use, but let's just round it up to about two tablespoons if you want. But it depends, you, you, you want to have that balance of sweetness, saltiness, spiciness. Now the secret ingredient though, the secret ingredient that I think makes it just going to blow the brain of the person who's going to eat it is this. It's called roasted blachan or trasi, right? I have access to this, I bought it at an Indonesian grocery. Um, down in Sydney at one point of time. I'm pretty sure I've seen it around as well in Coles supermarket. So roasted blachan just has that darker, nicer roasty uh, flavor to it, but it's a shrimp paste, okay, a shrimp paste. Now in this particular packaging, it comes in four little cubes, right? Now this cube, is the amount that I have used for this amount of rice. Um, I've crushed it up into just to separate it a bit more, okay? But you could actually blend the garlic, the chili, the uh, shrimp paste, the onion, and create your own paste before you cook it. But I'm just gonna do it separately and it's all gonna go in the wok. Um, it might create a different texture, it might not but um, the flavor is going to be there and later on you will see. And for garnish, it's the fried shallots, some bawang goreng. Just put it on top for a bit of crunch later on before you eat it. So keen. Let's cook it. It's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be so good. So we're gonna cook it right now and all the ingredients have been moved to this place. So we're gonna just Keep it going and keep it rolling. The pan, the wok is now hot. I can feel it. I've turned it on for a bit. So we're gonna do the eggs first and I'm going to separate it and you'll see what I mean by that. Um, a little bit of oil, just a little splash. It really is um, not necessary to put on too much at this stage. I mean, this is only gonna be for the eggs. Okay, just spread it around a little bit. Let me just grab the egg, here you go. Just the eggs are now popped, there are four of them. I'm just gonna give it a little stir. Um, this is what they would do in Indonesia as well. I noticed, I mean, again, different chefs, different cooks will make it differently, but they usually do the eggs like this. And then they would just like, you 
know. Whack him in. It's hot. Oh, beautiful. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Sizzling, sizzling, sizzling. It does look like a scrambled egg at the end of the day. Woohoo! Uh, put it aside for now. Right, so now that the egg's put aside, we're gonna do everything else. So a bit more oil. Um, I'm putting this a little bit more, putting in a little bit more than when I did the egg. Because obviously all the rice will be added in as well. And this, while the oil is heating up, the, the wok should be hot as before. Haven't adjusted the temperature or anything like that. Um, yeah, while we're waiting, you know, what's your favorite dish? What is your favorite food? I think I've asked you before in a previous episode. Um, write down in the comments below. If you've been to Indonesia, what is your favorite Indonesian dish? Let me know, write it down and tell me if you want me to cook it. But again, no guarantee that I can because some of the things that I do cook is pretty much things that I know. So that's why it's called Ian Shares a Recipe. All right, it looks pretty hot now. And the first thing that we're gonna do is the onions, right? Just let's whack them in. Let's get that and onions soften a little bit and releases the fragrance. There's actually a glitch to the camera. I have added in here now the shrimp paste, the chili sauce, and the garlic. Um, the cameraman missed everything, but yeah, it has been added in here, and I've just been stirring it up and cooking it up. If you were here right now, you could probably smell the aroma of the shrimp paste. It will infiltrate the whole house and the whole neighborhood with it. They will go like crazy. They will go like, what is that smell? It smells so good. And they're gonna be like knocking on our door later on. I bet you they will, and probably they won't. But So onion, garlic, chili, shrimp paste. It's all just cooking away right now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add the capsicum just to soften it and again releases the fragrance of the capsicum mixing it all in oh the aroma of this it's crazy man and after all this let's bring the chicken in and the egg all right so everything goes back in together Okay, mixing it around, making sure that every bit of the chicken and the egg gets a bit of those delicious, tasty shrimp paste. But look at the color. That is delicious. Oh, my goodness. The smell. The smell is so good. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so let's add in the rice da, 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 da. and now my technique has to change I have to use two device two device two things I'm gonna have to do it like this oh look at that so I've been stirring it stirring it for a bit maybe um, just trying to achieve consistency um, you may have noticed from the way I stir uh, just because it's heavy and I don't have the space and that so that's why I use these two um, the wooden spoon and the um, what's this thing called spatula uh, yes um, see so now it's a bit more consistent the color is more consistent alrighty I'm just reducing the heat down a bit because right now it's just a matter of tasting now I so said this is the part where you just gotta taste um, the rice in itself. I haven't actually added any soy sauce or even um, 
sweet soy sauce. So I haven't added them, but the color you can see it's already brown just from the shrimp paste itself. Um, taste wise, it's good. Um, the saltiness from the shrimp paste is there, so it's actually really, it's good already in itself, but I just want to add a little bit of salt. I think it still needs a bit more. Okay, that's probably enough. Um, I want a bit more peppery tone. Oops. Oops. To it, just a little bit, because I could feel, taste the kick a little bit. That's not too bad. I guarantee you, my wife, it won't be bad. You will eat it for dinner, you have no other option. Still recording, right? Good. <laughs> Taste a little bit again. Mm, good. I will add soy sauce. Not because it's not salty already, it's just, just a little fragrance of soy sauce that will, to me, will just add flavor to it. And just yeah again this is up to you um, not too much just a little squirt like that literally and now the sweet soy sauce just to balance it out the saltiness and the sweetness and it will add some color it will go browner it will go darker again just a little one like that we'll see how we go it's almost done guys it's almost done oh there you go so now the smell of the premium soy sauce, you can smell it through. As I mix it through, you can just smell it. it releases the fragrance a lot more. It is so good, I'm looking forward to eat this. Judging by its color, it looks pretty good. It's pretty much done. Let's taste it one more time. Yep, not going to add anything, just the right balance, not too sweet, not too sweet, um, there is saltiness, there's flavour, there's a hint of spice but not too spicy, um, and the shrimp paste, just another element that adds to this whole fried rice, I'm going to turn off the stove, um, yep, really I'm not going to touch it anymore, this is it, alright, plate it up for you. Here we go, and a bit of crunch on the top will add to the experience in your mouth. Oh, oh, here we go. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Ian Shares a Recipe. Write down in the comment below if you've had a go and tell me how it tastes, whether you like it or not, and whatever comment you want to say about this recipe. Thank you for watching. Um, give me some suggestions, some recommendations of what to cook. Um, it could be anything, it doesn't have to be Indonesian. I know the last two episodes has been Indonesian just because of my background, but it doesn't have to be and hopefully I can cook it. No guarantee though, but hopefully I can cook it. All right, well, take care. Please stay safe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Oh, one more button the notification bell. Make sure you do that too. Thanks for watching guys. It's been good to have you. It's been good sharing my recipe with you in my kitchen. I hope you are well. I hope you are safe. I'll see you next time.